Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how I did my makeup on my wedding day. I didn't do my own hair on my wedding day, but this was sort of the vibe it was. It was totally different in the back, but like from the front, it kinda looked like this. I didn't feel super confident with doing my own wedding hair, but my own wedding makeup was actually really important. I kinda like flip-flopped a little bit as I was planning, and I kinda wanted to offload the job, but I ended up having the makeup artist do my makeup for my bridal shoot, and I wasn't 100% in love with it. It wasn't horrible or anything. I don't want to say that, but I just wanted to do it myself. So I did. And I was actually really happy with the way it turned out. It lasted all night and all through the day. I got married on July 7th in Houston. No part of the wedding was outside, but we did take pictures outside. There's really no way to completely insulate yourself from the heat and the humidity in Houston, Texas in the summer. It's just like not a thing. Like you're going to melt at some point during the day. That's just how life works here. And that was the biggest thing that I was really scared of. So so summer wedding in like the hottest, humidest climate on the planet. So it was kind of an uphill battle, but luckily I've lived here for most of my life. So I am used to doing my makeup in this challenging environment. So hopefully if some of you guys are getting married or going to an event, or I don't know, you just want your makeup to last, hopefully this tutorial can be helpful for you guys. I'm using a lot of my like favorite standby products, stuff that I've used for years and years and years, stuff that is tried and true. I wanted to look like myself on my wedding day. Obviously, I wanted to look really good. I wanted to look like a better version of myself, but I didn't want to like do something that looked totally different. You know what I mean? When you're planning a wedding, your mind goes all haywire. And I thought into this probably way too deep. And I was just like, I'm going to be looking at these pictures for the rest of my life. These are so important. My kids are going to be seeing these. And apparently like my future children that don't exist yet are like celebrities. I'm very nervous about their impression of me. I practiced a lot like through the month before when I had solidly decided I was going to do my own makeup. And I went with something that is, I mean, not too crazy, but like I said, it lasted, it looked good in pictures. So I'm really hoping this is helpful for you guys. I don't know if there's anything else I need to ramble about with no makeup right now, but I'll keep you posted. For my primer, I just use my good old Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. This is my little travel size. I empty a big size into this. This is a primer I've used for years and years and years. I did try a few different ones because one of my biggest concerns was the humidity and the heat and just being really scared of that breaking my makeup makeup down and me looking like a sweaty pig in some of my pictures and I kind of did a little bit towards the end of the evening but I expected that and like that's okay I had the time of my life it's okay you know I tried to like look fancy and wedding-ish these were not the earrings I wore I don't have the jewelry I wore because my mom actually loaned me her jewelry to wear for the wedding it was like my, my something borrowed and I had like a bracelet two necklaces and earrings and it was really really pretty but I don't, I don't have that kind of Luna is upset but I don't really have that kind of stuff anyway we shall probably zoom in a little bit come here to me all right hopefully you can see what I'm doing I went on to my lids with my Tarte Shape Tape this is like my heavy duty concealer that I go to when I'm like no but for real I really want to cover these eye veins because I have veins on my face and on my lids that just they just don't quit and when I'm really seriously like trying to do a look like I'm really trying to do my makeup do eyeshadow and all that I like to put concealer before before I put the primer down. And on this day, I also did my eyes before I did my foundation, which is not what I usually do. Now I'm using the Tarte Shape Tape Eye Primer. This is probably a needless step, but I do really like this eye primer. I feel like I look weird right now. Don't I look weird, guys? Ooh, also before my eyes, I did a little color correcting under my eyes. This is the good old, like I said, I used a lot of throwback favorites, the good old Maybelline Age Rewind corrector, concealer, eraser, whatever it's called. All of these years later, I still don't remember the full proper name because it's like 87 words in a row. And I just use this to kind of like prime correct my under eye. It's very bright. It's just good for me. Like I said, I have those crazy veins and I really, really, really hate when they show through my foundation. Okay, I'm kind of going out of order just because I forgot to do this before I primed my eyes and everything. This is the NYX Matte Finish Spray that I use kind of as a primer on top of a primer i layer my brows. I'm just doing a quick spritz of that and I let it dry and set while I do my eyes. Actually, while it dries also, I use a little bit of powder to also set it. I'll tell you about it when I do it. But for now, I'm gonna start 
on the lids. So for my lids, I only used one palette. This is the Viseart Neutral Matte Palette. I've talked to you guys about this palette, especially on my vlog channel, because I was angry at this palette. In fact, I should not be hitting it like that because this palette could fall apart at any moment. For some reason, there are packaging issues. I had to go through a whole thing with this palette. I glued this whole thing into the pan. I think they've even like changed their packaging. Anyway, I love this palette, even though the packaging sucked. And this is the only palette that I used for my eyes. I really, really like these shadows. I'm using these two lighter shades. This one's like a very slightly off white color. And this one's more of a like, I don't know, very light creamy beige. And I'm using those colors on a big brush just to sort of like set the whole lid because my lid was kind of juicy with all that concealer and primer and stuff. This palette is a splurge, but in my opinion, it is worth it. It's blendable. It's all matte. The shadows just work. They stay on really great and they've got a good color payoff as you can see. Like I said, now that that powder has dried down just a little bit, I'm going to grab a little bit of my Laura Mercier translucent powder and I'm going to go all over my T-zone and that will help keep me matte and it will help bump up my coverage a little bit. Trust me, if you're scared it'll make you cakey, it won't. It's worth it. Now back to the eyes, I'm going to be mixing this really kind of orangey full-on in your face peachy color with this one that is a lot more subtle. It's the transition color I've always waited for dreamed for hope for and I'm just going willy-nilly with a fluffy brush into the crease all over that crease and even down onto the lid a little bit I didn't want like a stark white lid I have like an almost hooded situation so I need brightness right there so I'm not doing like a full smoky eye I'm just doing what I do you know what I mean there's no word for it just what I do. This is the next color that I use. It's kind of more of a warm medium brown and I just use it on a brush like this. It's kind of more packed but still fluffy. I really really load up my brush and then I just go on the outer third and really like pack it on out there. Like I said with my eye shape I really just have to be super careful not to close off my eye because I think it just looks awful if that ever happens. So a lot of the drama, a lot of the smokiness is just in the outer corner or the outer edge and up in the crease but all out here. Now once I have that medium brown built up as much as I need it, I go into this dark brown. This is the darkest color in the palette besides the black. I didn't want to go full on black just because, I don't know, I just I just didn't want to go there. And this brown actually does come off extremely, extremely dark, but felt like that's what I needed. I played around. I tried it with black and I just felt like it was too much. So this brown is like the perfect stopping point for me. And I'm just going in with more of like a small smaller pencil brush and I'm going right onto that outer V area. I'm being really, really careful not to spread it out too much because that's where I make mistakes. Sometimes I get a little over eager, it starts to get a little too high and then it gets crazy. So I don't know, I just have like kind of a difficult eye shape or I see it as difficult probably just because it's the one I have to work with and I have to be really careful about where I place the colors. Since day to day, I really like to do an eyeshadow wing liner rather than and liquid liner. I still kind of wanted to mimic that look along the outer edge of my lash line, but I wasn't going to do just eyeshadow or the liner. I just wanted something that would show up a lot better in pictures. Now I'm going back in with that fluffy brush with the medium brown, and I'm using that to blend in the darker brown. And now I'm dipping a little bit back into that dark brown and making sure the deep dark color is still super pigmented. Really, I could go back and forth on these steps forever and ever and ever and I totally did on my wedding day I didn't even time how long I took on my makeup I took the maximum amount of time I could take because it was just like, okay I want to be like really careful. It's like the makeup of your life. I don't know I probably overthought it big time, but I really liked how it turned out I only had one big mess up I was doing my liquid liner and I don't know what happened It's always at those times when you really need your makeup to look good You have like one little hiccup and it got like a little little eyeliner up there, but I was able to fix it and it was all right. But in that moment I was like, Leanne, why? I had no patience for myself, but it all turned out all right. Now I'm gonna go back into that peachy shade and that original brush and I'm gonna use that to try to reclaim that transition area. It got lost a little bit. I started going a little high, telling my story. Okay, I just need to stop messing with the eyeshadow because it's starting to get crazy on me, but like this is the general idea for the upper part of the lids. To tightline my eyes, I use the Urban Decay Glide On 24-7 Eye Pencil in Perversion. It's just like a super black pencil. I went all up under there and 
and I was sure to get my inner corners. Doing this can kind of do you dirty, but it looks really good. You might have to check in the mirror a little bit more often to make sure you don't have like black eye boogers, but I feel like it really, really like extends my eye and makes it seem like longer and wider and just better all around. It's the rhythm of the night. I don't know. I can no longer explain the way my brain works anymore. For my winged liner, I went back and forth on this so many times. Should I do it? Should I risk it? Because it is a risk to do liquid liner on your wedding day because it could run if you cry, if you sweat too much, if you get wet. I don't know what could happen. It is a risky move, but I went for it and it didn't betray me. It was okay. I used the NYX Epic Ink Liner. This is a really good one. It is waterproof and it didn't come off. It was really good. As I was coming down the aisle, there was a moment where I kind of like welled up because it was the moment that I could really visualize like going into it like the day of. Like everyone was asking like, what's the biggest moment for you? What are you looking forward to the most and all of that? And I was just like walking down the aisle and seeing Grant and you know, being with my dad and everything, you know, the whole thing. As that happened, like right when we came through the doors, I started to well up and I was like, oh, I'm gonna cry. Which I thought about everybody crying except for me. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is about to happen. But then I kind of started to become very aware of all of the other people and I just started to get really excited. It was a really weird roller coaster of emotions and I didn't actually cry like ball or anything, thankfully. So my eyeliner was saved. I didn't cry, but it was a close one. And I was just so super, super, super careful with my liner. I didn't want a big crazy wing. I didn't want it to be this huge dramatic thing. And I really didn't want my liner to close off my eye at all. This liner is really, really good for me because it has a really fine tip brush. You can get like the finest, finest line, which is exactly what I need in life. And really, I just did the babiest wing ever. And I was so nervous about messing this part up, but it went okay. Honestly, I was blown away by how okay my makeup went because I really had practiced a lot going up to it. Probably all of this sounds crazy, but I was just like so in my head about it. Oh, this one came out kind of wiggly. <laughs> I promise it wasn't wiggly on the day of. I really don't know what to call this look. Is it kind of like a soft glam? Is this a hard glam? I think it's like a medium glam. Would people click on this video if I called it like medium glam bridal tutorial? All right, so that's basically what that looked like. The eyes are not completely done, but it was kind of the basic idea. But now I'm moving on to foundation. This is the foundation I used for my wedding. I went back and forth. I tried new things. I tried old things. I tried mixing which a lot of times I will mix this with another foundation to kind of thin it out and to make it a little less like bulletproof. But you know what, for the wedding, I decided I want full on and I just wore this by itself. I used it with this Zoeva flat top kabuki brush and I used it in color 2W1. I went back and forth a million times. I did get a spray tan, but it didn't work. I don't know how it happened, but I did a spray tan the morning before. I left it on for the allotted amount of time I was supposed to do and for some reason it just didn't develop or maybe we just weren't on the same page and she didn't do it dark enough I just didn't get the color I wanted at all and so being the crazy person that I am I brought myself tanner to the hotel the night before and did myself tanner so I wasn't fully sure what color I was gonna be I actually think I'm darker now than I was on the day so hopefully this works I really tried to like slow down do my makeup in small sections like I'm always always just like rushing through my makeup. But for this day, I just wanted to really like slow down, pay attention and take my time. And so I'm really just like going through and doing like each quadrant of my face by itself and making sure the foundation really gets blended in the way it should because this foundation, it dries down and it is like locked in place. This foundation is no joke. I've talked about it a million times. So if you haven't heard it from me, you've probably heard of it from someone else, but this foundation is a good one for coverage level and for staying power and for heat and humidity, you know, when you need it to stay all day and you need to take photos and you just wanna look perfect. Is that so much to ask? <laughs> it is heavy. So if you have never worn makeup before, you're probably gonna feel weird, but for your wedding, you're gonna feel weird. Get used to it. <laughs> it is like the single weirdest day ever. Like what you have to wear for your wedding, it's crazy. What you have to do for a wedding, it's just all crazy. Wall to wall, like every little tradition, every little thing you have to spend money on, 
every little thing that's like the right thing to do for your wedding. It's just all just insanity. No matter what your intentions are when you like set out on the process and you're like, I'm gonna be different. I'm gonna do my own thing. Of course, there's plenty of things that we didn't do that you're like supposed to do, but there are just things that you fall into and it's like a trap. You're just like, whoa, wait, why am I doing this? I don't actually want to do this. But in the end, it's all worth it. At the end of the day, I don't regret it. I am so happy that we did every single thing we did for our wedding because it was just a dream. It was a dream come true. Like afterward, I was just like elated, like happier than I've ever been in my life. So happy to be married. So happy the wedding was just like incredible. I'm gonna do a whole video about the wedding, about all of the details. If you don't watch my vlog channel, you might not know this, but I'm gonna go through like all the vendors, like all the things, like all the stuff that went wrong, all the stuff that I loved, like everything when I get more of the pictures back because I wanna be able to like show stuff while I'm talking about it. I feel like that will like make the video so much better. So now I'm rambling, I'm gonna stop. I do have a couple little spots. Nothing that was like an active breakout. Oh, I probably should mention this. This is one of the things I did that really helped me not break out on my wedding day. I don't know if everyone would be willing to do this for their wedding, but I was. A lot of you guys probably know already, I'm off the pill. I got off the pill a few months ago and ever since I got off, right before my period, I start breaking out in an abnormal way. Like before I started taking the pill, it was not like this. Like I've never really had breakouts like this until now. And I was like, oh, wonderful timing. So great, love this, amazing. Like I have a better mood. Like I feel so much better being off the pill, but I look horrible and so, I was really concerned about that and I talked to my dermatologist about it and she gave me like a very, very low dose antibiotic to take every day. And I did that the month leading up to the wedding and I had totally clear skin. I still had some kind of like fading marks from past breakouts, but I didn't have any active breakouts, which was so nice. It was just like a safety net where I was just like, you know what? If I do anything wrong with my makeup, I'm doing something wrong with my makeup, but I'm not gonna have to deal with like an active breakout and have to deal with that. So that was really nice. That was one thing that I did to kind of ensure that my skin was not gonna be a mess and it wasn't. Okay, so I'm adding a little foundation down my neck. I always talk about this. It's probably not something that you guys really notice, but it's something that I really don't like and I'm kind of insecure about. I have a lot of veins that you can really, really see around my neck and on my chest. And I really wanted that to be covered up on my wedding day. My wedding dress kind of had a neckline like this. It actually had like a lower V. So a lot of my neck and my chest is exposed. And it was important for me to have that area really covered, you know? And that was one of the things I was really, really concerned about with doing my own makeup because when I bring foundation down like that, it always gets all over my clothes. And I hate that so much. And I would hate to have my makeup get all over my dress. So like I said, I had done that makeup trial with the makeup artist for the bridal shoot and they used airbrush makeup. I didn't really like the airbrush makeup for my face and that was one of the reasons why I didn't go with them, but she brought the airbrush all the way down my neck and a little bit onto my chest to cover the veins because I talked to her about it. And I was amazed, astounded, so impressed with the way the airbrush makeup did not transfer at all and it covered everything up. It stayed, it looked so good. I was so hot and sweaty and just disgusting at that bridal shoot. And so I was just like, wow, I have to have this. So even though I didn't do my face makeup with the makeup artist, I had the makeup artist airbrush my neck and my chest. I know that's so weird. We did like body makeup, but not the face. Honestly, I'm so impressed with that. That part of me is like, I need to get an airbrush machine like just to do that job. Next up to do a little concealing. I'm using the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I love this stuff. Obviously, it is like used up. I use it in the color Light 2.5 Creme Brulee. And I don't need a lot of concealer right now, but I still want some a little bit around my nose because I always have a little bit of redness there. And my little spot, it's like taking my whole life to fade. And I hate it so much because when I'm not wearing makeup, it looks like, I don't even want to say it, what it looks like. I do not like it at all. But this concealer is just like a lifesaver for redness and blemishes and stuff like that. It doesn't move on you. It can get a little cakey if you use too much, but you don't have to use very much, which is amazing. Now, again, I'm using my Tarte Shape Tape under my eyes. I don't need a ton 
but I am brightening and also concealing because I can still see those veins just a little bit. I'm also going down my nose, a little bit here, a little bit here, and that's it. This stuff goes a long way. If you haven't tried it, I don't know where you've been, but that is a very good concealer and I still love it. And doing the concealer after the eyeshadow, obviously it can really, really help you clean up that shadow if it's gone down a little too far. Right now, I'm just pressing the concealer into my skin. I'm always really grossed out by that phrase, but that's just exactly what I'm doing. The concealer is very much full coverage, but you can get even more coverage if you apply it like this. Now, immediately I'm going in with my Laura Mercier translucent powder on this little dual ended brush and I'm going under my eyes. I'm not baking or anything. Baking does not work on my skin. It makes me look horrible. But right now I'm just focusing on dusting this powder all over the places where I normally get my oiliest or I've applied concealer to really set that in, lock it in, and don't get a chance to crease at all. Normally I try not to like go crazy with the setting powder because I know it doesn't look so great. But on this day, I just didn't even care. I was like, you know what? This makeup is staying on like my life depends pins on it. I went to town with a big fluffy brush and I think it really, really helped. Next up, I'm going to do my brows. There's only so long I can look at this face with no brows. This is the MAC Eyebrow Styler in Lingering. It's just like an eyebrow pencil and I love it. I went back and forth on all different brow products because I love a lot of different ones, but I started using new stuff and then, I don't know, it was a confusing process, but I'm so glad I just like went with the straightforward, good old eyebrow pencil. Doesn't do you wrong and really I didn't do anything crazy like I said I just wanted to look like myself I wasn't doing like some kind of like crazy Instagram brow I just wanted to fill them in and I wanted to make sure they were gonna show up on camera because since my brows are super super fluffy and they really just like do whatever they want no matter what like no matter what products I use they are gonna stand off of my face and I just kind of have to live with that sometimes if I don't use a product that's dark enough they can catch the light and kind of become invisible which is so weird it's not normal, but I really had to be super conscious about that because I didn't want to like have no brows in my pictures. But this pencil is so good. It's so easy to use and I've been really, really happy with it lately. The color I have is, woo! no, it just got all over my shirt. Really? I just took the tags off of this shirt to wear it to like kind of seem like I'm wearing a wedding dress. Oh my gosh. Did I even tell you? The color is lingering. So now that my brows are at least in the building, I'm going to to top it off with the new Milk Kush Fiber Brow Gel and I have it in the color Dutch. I really just wanted to do everything I could to ensure that my brows would show up. And this is a little bit darker than I would usually do for like every day, but since I was doing more of a dramatic look, I felt like I could pull it off. Now I'm gonna go back and grab my Viseart palette and I'm gonna go in with this lighter off-white shade and I'm gonna reinforce the bottom edge of the brow and highlight. To line my lower waterline, I use the L'Oreal Infallible Longwear Eye Pencil in Nude Beige. Really, these don't last on me very long, but I didn't want to go for a dark color because that would just close off my eye. Ow. Wow. <laughs> It just poked my eye. Wow. Suddenly this tutorial is cursed. And for the lower lash line, I'm going back in with this medium brown with this little detailer pencil. And I'm just going to like try to smoke out that lower lash line to connect with this upper portion. I really have to focus on keeping it on the outer edge. I did bring it in a little bit, but it's really focused out here. And now I'm dipping into that darker shade just a little bit and keeping it really focused on the outer edge. And now to highlight my inner corner on my eyes, I'm using the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlight in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. I'm using the sparklier, more dramatic, full glitz side. I wanted this highlight to really stick around all night if I could get it to. And I really needed it to like open up my eyes and widen my eyes since I did go pretty dramatic or more dramatic for me at least. As you can see, I have my lash extensions and I did have my lash extensions for the wedding. I did do something kind of crazy. Yet again, I'm telling you about something I did that was kind of over the top for the wedding. I went in the week before the wedding at the beginning of the week and I got my 
eyelash extensions completely taken off and I got a lash lift. I have really super straight, almost downturned lashes. And so sometimes my lash extensions can kind of go like down and then up. And so I wanted to do everything I could to kind of avoid that. So I went in, got them taken off, did a lash lift and then went back a few days later and got my lashes put on again. So like a completely fresh set. I get 3D or 4D, I don't know what you call it, volume lashes. And I go to Kirsten at Dollface Lashes. I will link her down below. If you're in the Houston area, do not go to anyone else. <laughs> like I sincerely mean that from the heart. I've been going to her for the last couple of years. I've done a whole video on the experience when I first got them. Lash extensions are amazing. They are a life changer. I am fully addicted if you can't tell. Obviously just wear strip lashes if that's what you're comfortable with. But I wanted to keep my lash extensions for the wedding. I kind of debated about it a little bit, but I wanted them for the honeymoon especially. So I was like, no, let's go all out. She took them all off, put them back on. And seriously, they looked so good. I will put in a picture they looked so good but I have had a recent fill they are not as dramatic as they were but because I am completely insane I added a little bit of a false lash on the outer corner and I just used good old demi wispies and I just cut them in half and used the inner half and it's just right on the outside I'm probably a complete crazy person but since we're doing this I'm gonna go for it and I'm gonna cut them but hey since we're here I'm gonna cut them up and we're gonna put them on just go ahead and learn from my mistakes if you are getting ready for your wedding look at me and be like I don't want to be crazy like that I'm not gonna go there I'm not gonna put the people around me through that this doesn't really affect anyone but me but I mean it's actually is very extra. Also, this probably goes without saying, you are not supposed to put false lashes on top of lash extensions. If she's watching this, which she's probably not. I'm sorry, pretend you didn't hear that. See, I'm really just talking about like the tiniest strip of lash, but for some reason, adding this to the very outer corner, it just does something. It helps uplift, it looks good. You'll see, I'm gonna do it, I'll be right back. Now that you can see what that looks like, I'm gonna do more things you're not supposed to do with lash extensions. If you're just wearing your natural lashes with mascara you absolutely want to use waterproof mascara I probably don't even need to say that I used waterproof mascara on my lower lashes I generally avoid waterproof mascara just because it's so hard to get off I used to use it but now that I have lash extensions I don't have to so I did use the Too Faced Better Than Sex waterproof on the big day but for today I'm not gonna do that because I don't want to go through the pain and heartache of taking it off so I'm just gonna bump up my lashes just a little bit and I'm gonna use the Ciate Wonder wand mascara which is a gigantic wand actually I'm not gonna use this on the bottom I'm just gonna use a little bit on the top on the ends just to accentuate the lashes these are really really fine really really like fluffy lashes and so sometimes I need a little help with just a little bit of mascara just on the ends. I just like a lot of lash what can I say now for my lower lashes I'm gonna use the pixie lower lash mascara I love this stuff I kind of forgot about it for a while this stuff is amazing the applicator especially is just so good for catching lower lashes. I always have trouble with it and I end up getting mascara all over the place and this is the solution. Finally, I'm going on to finish my skin. This is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. It's a powder contour. I've been using this forever and a day. I finally got a new one. It's just good. I can't get away from it. These two colors mixed together give a really nice like kind of slightly bronzy contour shade it's not too warm but it's not too cool either so I just went around my hairline around my forehead get it nice and shady shade it up and then also my cheekbones and I also go over my ears with this because I hate when my ears look lighter than my contour because they're kind of right next to each other I think it just looks weird and I also contour my jawline this is a super important part for me to contour because I feel kind of like self-conscious about this whole area I also really like to like go up on my chin a little bit like this obviously not very much and I like to blend it as much as possible just because I have a longer face and I don't exactly love that or at least I don't want to accentuate that so I really focus on going across the top of my forehead not the sides and I like to go up on my chin a little bit to kind of squish my face together a little bit like make it a little bit shorter a little bit fatter a little bit cuter I do what I can it doesn't exactly work miracles but I think it does something and now to contour my nose I'm just grabbing this cool 
shade on this little Real Techniques angled brush like this. I think they call it a concealer brush. Never use this for concealer, but it's great for nose contour. I really just try to like go not too heavy with it, slim my nose down, and then also try to slim this bottom part by doing the little V shape trick right here. And I also go along the sides like that because I got a weird nose. And now because I've never contoured my nose and felt like I didn't go too hard with it, I grab this brush again and I go into these two lighter shades like the banana one and then the beige one and I go under my eyes but I also go onto my nose and onto that little area where I contoured on the side and I kind of like blend it away a little bit and soften it up. Sometimes I like to go straight down the nose and then also between my brows a little bit just to brighten that up and also go on the chin maybe right here if you felt like your contour came down too far. This has been a marathon makeup session. Now I'm going on to my blush and surprise surprise it's Milani Luminoso. Probably none of you guys are surprised that I use this blush. I use it all the time. I've been using it for years and you know what? It's what I like so I'm not going to switch it up. Is your wedding day like a time for like avant-garde new makeup? Maybe if you're like Kat Von D but that ain't me girl. Uh oh I almost forgot my bronzer. This is the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Omega Bronzer and I use this big fluffy brush and because one of the contour colors that I use is kind of like a warm bronzer color, I don't really focus that much on bronzer. It's just a step that I cannot skip. I just feel like it ties everything together. It really ties the room together. All right, we're back on track and now it's time for highlight. You guessed it. It's the Laura Geller Gilded Honey. I've been using this forever. It's just good, okay? And I wanted to look like myself and I love Gilded Honey, so I went in on my cheekbones and a little bit up on my temples and down on my cheeks a little bit too. I like a shiny cheek. I have some texture there, but like part of me is like, I don't even care. Shine that texture up, bring it to the table. I also put a tiny bit on my finger and I run it up my nose very carefully. And then I go very carefully with the brush. So it's not like an actual line down my nose. That's not the look I'm going for. And now for the lips, finally, this is my good old trusty, trusty one inch lip pencil. It's the NYX Peekaboo neutral. I've been using this forever. It is just a good lip pencil. It's like inviting all your favorite friends to your wedding. You gotta bring the whole gang together. You're invited. You're invited. You're invited. And now for my lipstick, I use the Hourglass Lipstick in Activist. I don't remember what these are called. Girl something? I don't know. I'll link all the makeup down below if you're wondering. I just love this color. It's one of those like me colors. It's kind of pink. It's kind of mauve. And I love it. And because I was still not completely decided, even though I tried so many different lip colors leading up to the day, I also added a little bit of Dreamer to the center. It's a much lighter pink. Doesn't do much, but it feels nice. I really like the formula of this lipstick and it's really easy to reapply. And to top it all off, I use the Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. I don't usually use spray because I'm a psychopath, but I was paranoid, so I went for it. And I really think it helped. Oh wait, no, I'd have to go get something to show you that also really helped. The other thing that really, really helped was having this with me. This is the Soap & Glory Kick-Ass Instant Retouch Pressed Powder. I just kept this with me in like a little clutch, which I actually wasn't carrying. Somebody else always had it because I didn't really want to have it in my pictures or anything, but I wanted to be able to have my lip color and my powder throughout the night in case I wanted to touch up. I really only use this twice and basically this is just like a little blotting powder or touch up powder and I really just needed to use it on my nose around my nose a little bit here a little bit here and you're good to go it doesn't make you look cakey and it dries up any extra oil and it makes you feel fresh again so that was great and super super handy to have I really hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys I hope you like the look it's just pretty kind of medium glam. I still don't know what to call this. I felt good about it. I felt like, you know, my best self. It wasn't too much. It was just enough. I'm kind of too much. So it was just what was right for me on that day. And I really love how it turned out. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. If you have an event coming up or if you're going to wedding or if you're having your wedding, congratulations. I hope you have an amazing time. I know that you will. Don't stress, don't stress, don't stress. Just practice a few times leading up to the wedding and you will be good to go. It will be like second nature. And yeah, I think that's it. Again, I will link everything down below. I'm really glad you guys watched. Thank you so much for all the sweet comments and the congratulations and all 
of the love on Instagram, on my vlog channel, here on YouTube, like just everywhere. I am like just blown away constantly by you guys and all the love and support and I just appreciate it so much and I know Grant does too. We're so lucky that like, you know, we met and had our whole relationship and now we're married. We did it all like and we got to share it the whole way. I mean, I guess I just got to share it, but he was part of it. Like he likes to share stuff with you guys too and he gets excited when y'all are excited. I don't know. It's just a really special, unique kind of situation and it's amazing. We are so, so, so lucky to have you guys like always rooting for us and we did it. So many comments from people being like, oh my gosh, I've been with you since you were like in college. Like I saw your graduation video and all that and then now like you've gone through all of this stuff and then now you're married and I don't know, it's just exciting. This video has probably been way too long. I appreciate you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell if you want notifications and you can also find me on social media yeah, I love to talk to you guys there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone. Luna, what are you barking at? Come here to me. What the heck, y'all? My brain just died. Is that weird? It's weird. Whatever. Okay. I'm sweating in my house right now. It is warm for some reason. I don't know who I'm yelling at. No one's here except for Luna. Sorry, Luna. There we go.